Hi, this is Kate from Isalicious Designs. Today I'm going to show you how to make the little Izzy Busy skirt with the uh, with the little straps that go over her shoulders. And um, I've also done a purple one, a little bit different. As you can see, I don't have the frill, the ruffle on this one that I have on this one. So it starts off like this and then we put the ruffle on if we choose to, completely up to you. But this is what we're going to be making today. So what we're going to do, I'm going to do it in red today because I think that'll be a nice bright colour. And we're going to start off by taking 50 bands and I've counted out 50 here and we're going to chain them. So the first one you're going to twist into a figure eight like this on your hook. Okay, so it's just one little, one little twist. So take it, twist it around once like that. And then we're going to chain all of the others on. Now I've actually found a nicer way of joining a chain together without leaving a great big lumpy bit in the middle. If you have a look here you can see where there's this great big lumpy bit where our end cap has been which is this little bit here on the end and uh, it gets quite tricky to do the first couple of rounds because you've got this lumpy bit in the middle solved that. <laughs> so I'll show you how to do it in this. So we'll chain 50. Now that first end cap counts as number one. All right so you've got your end cap and 49 bands. We have got emergency vehicles going bonkers down the uh, I'm like two streets back from the uh, main road and I can hear them going and we've got horrible thunderstorms here at the minute so I'm just hoping everybody's safe out there on these wet roads isn't it odd weather we're having for, July, uh, for June very strange sent my kiddo to school today in long pants well summer camp in uh, long, long trousers It's winter in Perth, where I'm from, and uh, we have our seasons the opposite side from everybody in the Northern Hemisphere. So it's 21 degrees here in, that's Fahrenheit, in, uh, in Missouri, or where I am in Missouri. And it's winter, and, and it's middle of, you know, it's summer here. We've just started summer. And it's winter in Perth, and it's 57 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's warmer in their winter than it is in our summer. Oopsie. I'm sure we'll have a heat wave soon enough and I'll be I'll be missing this cooler weather. I love the cool weather. So nearly at the end. Now you will need a stitch marker. If you don't have a stitch marker, a, a specific stitch marker, use an S clip or a C clip. They work just as well. All right. We're not going to need it just yet. I'm just going to angle my camera a little bit better. There we go. So that's our chain of 50. So make sure that it's not twisted. Come all the way down. We want to make sure that it's not twisted. I can see a little glitch there. That's fine. Make sure it's not twisted. Let's see what's happening here. There we are. And then you're going to grab this end and put it on the end of your hook. Now, you're going to take it so that you've just got one loop. This is your end cap, okay? These two loops make up your end cap. We're going to slip one loop off. So you've just got this longish loop for your end cap on your hook, okay? I'm going to make sure we're focused in here. So, as I said, there's your end cap. 
drop one loop of it so that you have a longer loop of your end cap and you're going to thread the two bands that are on your hook down here onto that all right to join it now this is our first stitch okay we're going to push our hook back through that one can you see so it's the first stitch after the end cap which is this this one here push your hook through and we're going to be doing single crochets all the way around so do your first one single crochet like that and join it to this and we're going to put our little stitch marker on here or your S clip, C clip, whatever you're using and now we go around doing a single crochet now we're not adding stitches, we're not doing increases we're not, um, we're not uh, taking away stitches, we're not doing decreases so by the end of this you should have 50 stitches. Now the other thing is we're doing five rounds of this so I'm going to put, I've already started my first round so I'm going to put four bands here to indicate that we have four more rounds to go and as I start each round I'm going to take one from that pile. I'm going to do this first round with you you'll do the other four by yourself and we'll try and make it so that this video doesn't take a hundred hours. Make sure that you don't twist this foundation chain that you made, this starter chain. It's called a foundation chain. You don't want it twisted. So you don't want to suddenly be doing it on this bottom side. You want to make sure that they're all on the top side of this foundation chain. Remember, with your tension, don't stretch the bands. If you don't stretch the bands, you won't get these great big gaping holes or it reduces the, the likelihood of getting that. There are other factors that can give you big holes like um, overstuffing. Well, we're not going to be stuffing this so that's good. So these five rounds are just going to be single crochet, nothing special, just single crochet which is what we're doing here all the way around.
knitting at the beginning again. Oops, try not to drop my hook. So this is my last stitch I just went through here. I'm going through this last stitch here. It's my last stitch. And then we'll start our second round of single crochet. Take one from this side, do a single crochet, and then we do our next round. As you can see, this is where we joined it. It's far less bulky. Do you see how that's far less bulky? And it's far easier to um, to actually just continue on. It doesn't leave such a big sort of mess here at the join. So I think that's a much nicer way to join. So you're going to do another four rounds. This is the um, second round, third round, fourth round, and fifth round, so that you have five in total. All right. So I've done my five rounds of single crochet and I have 10 bands here set out ready to do my next 10 rounds. And for each round that I do is going to be single crochet. The difference between just a normal single crochet is that each of these rounds is going to have two decreases in it. We will go from, in the next 10 rounds, we will go from 50 stitches in total around our skirt to 30. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 and 20. It'll decrease it by 20 stitches in total. So it's up to you where you do those decreases. I can't really say to you five here and three here and two here. You're going to look at your dress and this is the back, this is the front. You're going to try and keep it out of the front as much as you can but we will maybe say do you know, four stitches and do a decrease and then maybe do a decrease over here and then in the next round do a decrease here and a decrease here. You want the decreases to not be on top of each other. You don't want all the decreases to be in the same spot. So you'll sort of move them around for each round. Okay, so let's get started. Let's do our first round and as I said, we're on round 10. So I'm going to take one from here and we'll do one stitch. two, three, and we'll maybe do a decrease now. Now, for an invisible decrease, you normally go through these front loops like that. For, for a regular decrease, you'd go through both of the loops, okay? And it gives you four loops that you then have to squidge together and combine into a single um, stitch. If you do an invisible, you just go through the front loops like this and you've only got two bands to go through now I'm actually going to do an invisible going through the two back loops okay and I think that it reduces the knobbly look that you get so I'm going to go through the two back loop whoops I'm going to drop everything hang on let's try that again so I'm going to go through the back loop of the first stitch back loop of the second stitch draw my band through and there's my single crochet. This is my next stitch here, okay? I'm going to do single crochets all the way around until I get to near the end, and then I'm gonna pick another spot to do a decrease. I'm going to do the first couple with you, but I'm not gonna do 10 rounds with you. Again, it will make the video very long, and uh, as I said, it's just each round has got two decreases in it and where you do them is completely up to you so single crochet We've done one decrease. We have one more to do for this round.
all you want to make do make sure is that you do not do your decrease on top of each other so for this round we've got them the next round we have to make sure we pick a different spot for each of them try not to stretch the bands as mentioned it uh, does affect the tension So I'm going to do my single, my decrease here. I'm going to go through this first back loop, then the second back loop, pull them together like that, and then this is my next stitch. When you get to the beginning again, take a band from our other pile over here, there's our first stitch, move our stitch marker and we're going to do a couple of single crochets, make sure that we don't go on the same spot that we did the previous rounds um, decreases and you can feel it it's a knobbly little bit that you can feel so this is about where we did it so I'm going to move past it we did it here so I'm going to move past it I've moved past it by about three stitches and I'm going to do the decrease here and then again keep going round until you find a spot near the end where you want to do your second decrease. Now I'm going to let you do the next eight rounds by yourself but I will finish this round with you and then we will join back up. coming around oopsie So I might do my decrease probably about 
well that's where my last one was so I'm going to do mine here I'm going to go through and through do my decrease on those two outside loops and then this is my next stitch all right so I'm going to let you do the next eight rounds we'll do the same thing for each of these next eight rounds you're going to pick where to do the decreases one for each uh, two I'm sorry for each round let's have a look and see how visible they are this is my last stitch I'm going to move into my first stitch take one from here move it and move my stitch marker let's see how obvious are they they're pretty hidden okay so I would not worry too much if you're going to go around so we've gone from here to here went from here to here you could do here to here for the next round and then go back to around here for the, for the next round all right so I will catch you back when you've done eight more rounds of this So I'm back and I've done my 10 rounds and I've decreased. Now, it really doesn't matter. I've, I've put my little skirt on my, my Izzy Bitty doll. It really doesn't matter if you go an extra, uh, an extra round because it's just going to make the skirt a little bit longer. And that really isn't a problem. It doesn't matter if you go around short, you know, less. You just have a shorter skirt. So that's completely up to you. 30 or around 30 fits her waist nicely. If you've got 31, okay, it, it really doesn't matter. So if you, this sort of has a, a bit of leeway to it. It doesn't matter if it's not exact, okay? But you want to have decreased by about 20, okay? And get to this stage put the little skirt on her and what we're going to do is work out here and here where we would like to put our little stitches okay now I'm going to use you can use S clip you can use a C clip you can use a stitch marker I'm just going to put a little stitch marker here okay and I'm going to put another I've got a little container here with stitch markers in it that I've got lying around let me see what I've got here oh here we go here's some blue ones Let's get one of those. Gosh, I've got some stitch markers all over the place. And I thought I was losing them. And I'm going to put, so I've gone, this is the centre here at the back. And I've sort of gone one, two, and I'm in three. So I'm going to go one, two, and three. I'll put one in here. Okay. Like that. And this is holding our current stitch. Then we're going to turn her over and work out on the front where we want these to be now on the front you're going to have it come in line with about there so I'm going to go about here and again work out where you want it to be and go about here again it doesn't have to be perfect there is no science to it it's just an approximation all right so we can take our little skirt off each of these straps, and you don't have to do the straps, okay? It's completely up to you if you want to do the straps. You can leave it as a little skirt like this. If you do, I'd probably say make it a tiny bit smaller, maybe 28, um, you know, um, stitches around if you can. So maybe do one more round with another two decreases just to make it a bit tighter. You don't have to. It stayed up quite perfectly like this. Put your hook back through where we started okay and we're going to do the straps in red you're going to as you can see we've done this one this is our next stitch here so we're going to go into the next stitch we're going to take off this stitch marker we really don't need that one anymore we're going to go into the next stitch which is where our stitch marker is and we're going to do a slip stitch so go through the stitch and add the stitch that's on your hook to it there we go and reclaim you can take that off now okay that's our first stitch we're going to do 25 so count out 24 so that's one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two 
23, 24 and 25. So if this is number one, you're going to chain those 25 just like this. And you don't, the colour choices that you choose, completely up to you. They don't have to be the same colour as me at all. The reason um, that I'm doing red is that I'm hoping to do a little cape with a hood and turn this into part of the Little Red Riding Hood outfit. Now keep it so that you're in line, okay, so that you don't have it twisting and turning. Put it all in a nice straight line. Now I have picked, <laughs> I picked yellow buttons, but as you know, the buttons, we can change those to any colour you want at all, really. I had yellow buttons, so I'm using yellow buttons. I've got my little threader. It's a little metal threader. I have a video tutorial on my tips and tricks on how you can make one from a twisty tie. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I have my 25 here, okay? Sorry, I'm putting that down. I need it to be ready. I need to take this and move it to here, okay? So I'm going to take one extra band, okay? Now you've got to be careful that you don't twist this. You want this to be... I'm going to pinch this. I'm going to go to the opposite side. So this is on the left. I'm going to the right. And I'm going to take one side. I might not need that extra band. Go through and reclaim. I'm going to take this one off. I'm going to go through one, through the other, like this. Now this is the, the loop that I'm going to put my threader through, like this. Okay, I'm going to get my button and I'm going to thread it from the back. Pull it through to the front, through to the back. From the, from the front to the back, I should say. There we go. Pull it through like that. I'm going to let go. I want to put this on my hook. I don't want to lose that. Okay. Now all I'm going to do, see, there's a little, the little hole that we've gone through here for this particular thing. I'm going to grab this with my finger, put my hook through where all this is happening. That's the busy bit, okay? I'm going to pull it through to the back side. I'm then going to go through, because all I'm trying to do is secure this button in place through the center of the last loop on my band. Okay, so I'm pulling it from the back to the front, splaying it open and wrapping around the button. So it's pretty easy to change the buttons at any time. Okay, so this side, we're gonna do the same, but push your hook through. This is number one. Get rid of the stitch marker, get that out of the way. I'm gonna chain 25, that's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 25. So let's chain these. And it really doesn't matter how you secure the button. I mean, as long as you've got a band that goes through and then splay it open around the button, that's the effect we're going for. Keep these straight. Oopsie, 
Let's try that one again. There's 25, hold on to it, okay, I'm pinching it here, I'm going to go through my where my stitch marker is, holding everything together, take the stitch marker out, I'm going to grab my band onto my hook again, take one side off, I'm going to pull it through, reclaim one over the other, and this is where I put my stitch mark, uh, my threader through. Okay, so I've got my threader through here, through the back of the button to the front, and then from the front of the button to the back. Don't lose the end of your band. There we go. Now, I don't want to just I don't want to really just um, loop it over, although I suppose it I suppose it would be okay. You don't really need to I like the added security of having gone round through the back to the front again, but if, I suppose if you just splayed it open that would that would be fine. It would still anchor it. But I'm gonna do ye old faithful. I'm gonna go and pull it from under here. Putting the end through, grab it again, find that first stitch, which is here. I think this just gives it a little bit of extra oomph. As I said, if all you want to do is thread it through the button and then splay it open, that's fine. So this is the most basic that it needs to be. Um, if you were to just leave it like this, it would work, not a problem. I, however, do like to see a little bit of um, fill and, and uh, detail to it. So what I like to do is do a bit of a, a, a ruffle here on the edge, and also we can do a little bit of ruffle on the actual dress itself. So the first things first, pick a side. We're going to work on this side first, and this is the, the, the side that we're going to be working on. So follow it around, and it starts, you're going to start in the center here of your work going through. Now this is this is how it joins to the skirt. This is the right side, this is the left side, this is the top loop, these are the top loops. We're going through the, the side that is closest to the center, okay? And we're gonna just do single crochets, take your single band. I'm using a new band. From Rainbow Loom called Lava Red or Red Lava and it's a dual layer I don't usually use dual layer bands but these are really nice they've come a very long way uh, in the feel and the texture of them these are lovely and um, I think with the little gold to it it's going to look really pretty so here we go Please remember, you can use whatever colours you like. Actually, I'm going to... That one is a bit weak. I'm going to throw that one away because that one's going to break on me. I can feel it. I can feel there's a weak spot there. Oh, these have a lovely feel to them. I 
And remember also you can change the buttons anytime you like as well. You could have you know change them out for ladybugs, um, any pretty buttons that you find really. It doesn't have to be you don't have to stick with the same one, you can change those out. You can do both sides of this with the single crochet up both sides of it, or you can just do down the one side. I'm just going to do down the one side. I have two more. It gets tricky as you get closer to the end. There's one, and let's do our last one here. Okay, so that's our last one. I'm going to turn this around. All I'm going to do to, f to seal this in, you can actually just stretch it and stretch it out. And pop it around the button and that's going to stop it from unravelling. You're not going to see it. You're not going to see the join. Obviously, if you change the button, you need to be aware that your stitching here is going to come undone. Um, but you can just leave it like that. Now let's do the other side again, if you remember where we started here, on the inside. Okay, so we're going to start on the inside here as well, which is these two here. All right, now it's going to be a little trickier because it's almost like we're working, well, we'll turn it around this way. There we go. I was going to say it's like we're working backwards, but that was just my brain being silly. We turn the skirt. It's been a long week. School holidays are here, so my kiddo is um, is home now. And she's doing summer camp. Um, we have this fabulous place that we go to, uh, which is where she went to preschool. And um, for the older kids that are at school, they do summer camp programs where they take them to places like the zoo and the science museum, all these fun places, all, all places that I'm too much of a scaredy cat to drive to without my husband being with me. You guys, <laughs> I'm, I'm a very scaredy cat driver. I, I drive locally. You guys drive on the opposite side of the road to me, so um, yeah, I find that quite intimidating. Which is funny considering in Australia I was a sales rep, I sold medical products and I would think nothing of driving six hours down in the country, long open roads, nobody on them, all by myself, wouldn't blink an eyelid, didn't worry me at all. But put me on the other side of the road and I'm like a big baby. <laughs> oh, broken band, let's get rid of that. this out of the way, there we go, nearly there, Here's my last stitch here. Oh, if I can get it. There we go. Pull it through. And again, I'm going to splay that open and pop my button through like that. Okay, so these are my little straps either side. I think they look a little nicer than just the plain red um, chain. Now, on the bottom, I'm going to start at the, at the back here, it doesn't really matter where, um, slap bang in the middle for all I care, and I'm going to again do 
Now what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to do go through one, chain a second, go to the third, or the second stitch, go through, add those stitches to it. Okay, so I'm doing like a little frill all the way around. So there's one, two, go to my next stitch and pull them through it. There's one, two, go to my next stitch, pull it through and pull those through it. So this is how I'm going to go all the way around just to sort of make this little frill on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to tip some more bands out. Here we are. That's my one chain. Here's two. Go to my next stitch. Pull through. Oops, careful I don't drop everything. Oh, I dropped everything. Let's, let's step back a bit. Oh, I'm really dropping everything. I'm not just doing this by half, am I? There's one, two, next stitch. <laughs> next stitch put them all on like a slip knot but you go one and two here's our next stitch now this is a bit band intensive but I think it looks pretty completely up to you if you want to do this I think personally I think it looks cute but as I said it's up to you I'm going to keep going around doing this lost my flow there didn't I? There we go. I'm going to go all the way around, making this little frill. Oops, about to do it again. Go through. <laughs> Third time lucky. There we go.
Oops. nearly at the end And that one again. One thing to be a bit silly. Okay, so our last stitch, you're going to go through this last one here and pull them all in, reclaim and do a slip knot and then we're going to hide that slip knot. We're going to pull this tie off band through to the inside of the skirt and going through some of these little V's on the inside here, push your hook through some of these. We're just going to hide it inside some of these little V's that we have here, like that. Okay, so this is the little frill that goes around the bottom of our skirt. Now, we could actually change these buttons to orange. That would look quite cute as well. So this is the little skirt that we have. I've, I haven't got a, a red shirt on her. I've only got a, a purple and white one. <laughs> She's not going to be very coordinated, is she? But never mind. It gives you an idea of what this is going to look like. So here she is. 
with her little straps to her little skirt. That's the length of the skirt like that. And then on the back here, oh, we've got a twist. And that might have been, oh, here we go. There we are. There we are. So there's her little skirt with the crisscross back. And she's got the little frill on the bottom and the little buttons. It's a shame you can't really see. Maybe if I hold it this way, like that. Now, for the green one, which I did, as you can see, I had the bottom ruffle, but then I went around again, twice, working my way up the little dress with extra frills, and you can do that. If you're going to do that, what I would suggest you do first is find the line that you're going to work with. So if you have a look here, we've got the dots here all in a line. See how we've got this here, and then this one would be the next one. And what you would do is place bands along this line. Now the first band I would do would be the same colour as the dress. So you're going to lay them like little slip knots, okay? Like this. And you're going to go all the way around the skirt, laying a base for you to then put the frill on, okay? And as you, you have the, then you're forming these little teardrops that you can actually put the frill on. I'm not going to do that for this particular tutorial. It would take too long. We're going to finish here. But if there's a, a big enough outcry, then maybe I can do a tutorial on how to put the rest of the frills on if people really want that. So here we are. There's our little skirt. I hope you enjoy making. I hope you're loving your little Izzy Busy doll. Remember, you don't have to do an Izzy Busy doll with the black shoes. You can do all of the shoe and the sock skin tone so that she's got bare feet and you don't have to put this little ruffle so she could be barefoot. And remember, the other thing that you could do is instead of white underpants, put blue or something and don't put the top and then she's a boy. So there we go. All right. Good luck with it. Take care.